Um, next story. Uh, the big story this week, of course, is that, uh, you know, um, <laughs> a bit like a, a large Japanese tanker ship going into the uh, Suez Canal. Uh, you're thinking, uh, what could go wrong? The, the Tokyo Olympics, um, you know, uh, inevitably st still stumbling forward. I mean, at this point, uh, you know, it, it's like watching a movie with a boxer who just, you know, refuses to go down. And uh, that's that's pretty much what the Olympics are now at the stage of. Uh, and yeah, the Olympic torch relay uh, started. Apparently it is scheduled that it will go through every prefecture in Japan. Uh, lots of celebrities and politicians and famous people signed up for it. However, because the, of the ongoing and increasingly worsening uh, COVID situation, um, the organizers wanted to make sure that, of course, it did not become a corona relay. Um, so uh, in order to uh, ensure that the um, torch bearers were, that were passing the torch to one another were not also passing germs to one another, it's actually a requirement that all uh, runners have to actually... I didn't actually realize this. I was corrected on this on Twitter by Wataru M. Uh, when I saw these people pulling out of the relay because their schedules didn't match and it just looked like people were just trying to avoid being seen, it looked, it looked like basically I was joking. It was like me trying to get dates in high school and people saying that they had to wash their hair and whatnot. Uh, you know, people suddenly pulling out for scheduling issues and, oh, yeah, yeah, Friday's no good, you know, including the Prime Minister, including a bunch of famous people, including even this guy, uh, Tsurube, who is actually a, quite a big celebrity guy in Japan. I was wrong. I, I thought people were pulling out because I was getting uh, Trump PTSD flashbacks to high school. But actually, uh, what was happening is is that in order to carry the torch in this relay, you are required to actually quarantine for two weeks. They're asking every runner to isolate themselves from two weeks, like not meet anybody. And the thing is, even two weeks, we all know by now, people still can like have it dormant for more than two weeks and can still totally pass it on to people. But they're saying two weeks. And obviously, if you're like the prime minister, uh, when they be pulled out for scheduling issues or people who are on regular live TV shows and whatnot, promising to isolate yourself for two weeks. Um, you know, and, and this is not to travel anywhere. This is just to go outside of your house and carry the torch, um, you know, locally even. Uh, it's not easy. So a lot of it, it obviously is difficult for people to do and a lot of people are pulling out. But it creates a, a recurring story every day that so-and-so famous celebrity is pulling out of the uh, torch relay because uh, the scheduling doesn't work for them for um, for the relay, which, uh, yes, I, I, I again, I, I assumed it was uh, <laughs> people standing up or, or, or not wanting to be associated with the relay. But actually, the, the, it's the quarantine thing that makes it particularly difficult. Um uh, I'll get into more detail soon about the pandemic, but certainly one thing that featured today was uh, it went through, it started in Fukushima Prefecture, and today it was going through Tochigi Prefecture. It's starting to go southwards in Japan. It's going to do a full loop through all, all the prefectures. But what was pretty clear in Tochigi is that uh, huge throngs of people came out to watch the uh, the relay happening. And there were lots of volunteers who were basically going around um, telling everybody don't stand so close together, but everyone was standing around and commenting to the TV, wow, there's lots of people really close together out here. So even though they're forcing the runners to quarantine, again, you have to worry, um, simply, because, I mean, thinking back to the Miyagi commem commemorations of the March 11, uh, you know, disaster, the 10th anniversary of that, right now they are having, they're, they're in, they've, they've announced another state of emergency, like a week later, they had an explosion of cases there, and so did Yamagata, the neighboring prefecture, which is very closely connected to Miyagi. So, um, you know, that was because crowds came out for a day of events. Um, basically, it triggered this huge like fourth wave up there. And uh, seeing in Tochi, you seeing the crowds and everybody looking around nervously. It looks like, again, this is the whole thing. Everybody is, is at least like, there's, it's nice that there's going to be the, the torch coming by and people do want to come out and see. But, you know, even if the runners are safe, it looks like another risk. So it, that said, I mean, the New York Times actually published what I thought was a, a, a stupid analogy, frankly. Uh, I respect the um, journalist from who, who from the New York Times who wrote this. She does good stuff. But I, I thought that likening um, the, the bloody-minded determination to go through with the Olympics, even if it doesn't make sense anymore, like the Japanese government in World War II, eh, you, you know, I wouldn't say that this is like bombing Pearl Harbor or invasion, invading Manchuria. Uh, you know, please, drawing comparisons to World War II, I kind of know what they're talking about. I mean, this was one of the things that Japan didn't surrender soon enough or react like when things were going badly because of paralysis within their bureaucracy. But, yeah, I mean, it's not good, but please, let's not compare the Olympics uh, any more than we need to to the Japanese uh, government in World War II, um, you know, not helping Japan times. I mean, even if people feel like that. 
I, I don't know anyone who's ever given that example before. That was just so cringy. But yes, they're certainly determined to go ahead with it, and that is what's happening with the uh, relay. Uh, good news is that they're not being stood up, but uh, it, it, it looks like it's still, it's just an increasingly not good idea. That is the torch relay situation. Quinn Rackett, you've heard that they've told the local volunteers that they're not wanted, uh, but they're going to bring 500 volunteers in from overseas. Yeah, that story came up in the start of the week, but then the government came out and said, no, they're not going to allow volunteers or people to come into the country for the purpose of volunteering. So that came up briefly. Um, and then the government said, no, they're not going to allow that. Right now, the government's coming under so much pressure, even just for allowing athletes when, um, you know, family members and people waiting for work visas and student visas are being uh, refused entry to Japan. They're actually limiting the total number of entrants to Japan right now to 2,000 people per day. So, uh, yeah, that, that, the, I think maybe the Olympics thought that was a good idea and they said they were going to allow this, but uh, the government uh, stomped that out as far as I understand. So, yes. Uh, Aaron, it would be an omen if the Olympic flame blew out along the way. Uh, well, funny you should mention that. And funny, I forgot to mention that. That, yes, apart, apart from in the lighting ceremony, it went out four times during the lighting ceremony. Apparently in Fukushima on the first day, uh, one of the, the, the changes, exchanges, where they, you know, they use the torch to light someone else's torch uh, and going on to the next one, apparently someone ran almost an entire section of the um you know the the marathon relay sections not realizing that the torch had never actually been lit um so um yeah if you're talking from an omens perspective it's it's uh, comprehensively as bad as it can get it's not even an omen that's that's the news Aaron. that actually happened um yeah for the olympics <laughs>